Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Um, real quick, I've been doing a lot of um, talking lately about health and things, things in food. Not totally new ground for me. If you followed my Fukushima work, Bluefin Tuna, I've been letting people know about deformed food, to avoid food from California, to avoid food from Hawaii. This is not new ground for me. However, uh, my father, as you know, I'm going to be doing a fundraiser soon, and when I do, you'll be hearing about it, has been diagnosed with liver cancer. Now, how does a non-drinking man get liver cancer? Yeah, he's big. I have heart disease, he's got it, and I see why. He's a big guy. Sugar? Yep. Few too many donuts, few too many pies, got sugar. Okay. I'm not blaming anybody here. Cancer? Well, how does a non-drinker get liver cancer? This happens because of things that are in our food. And I'm going to be doing a report uh, probably the next time I post or soon after, pointing out that cancer was an unheard of disease before processed food. Uh, by that I mean, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, any food in a box, if you will. Um, let's check this out real quick. This is from CBS News, and it is one of the most poorly written articles that I've seen in recent memory. But just the same, um, it's worth quoting. Study baby boomers' health very poor and getting worse. The baby boomer, baby boomer generation's overall health has been on a sharp decline. Yep, no, 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 no mention of high fructose corn syrup. No mention of the bomb testings that sent radioactive poisons all over the U.S. And uh, the U.S. has done over 1,000 of them. No mention of that at all. Great article so far. Australian researchers from Adelaide's three universities have completed the first stage of a report on a generation born between the end of the Second World War and the mid-1960s. During that time, of course, they took food as we know it away. There used to be minerals in the ground. Uh, they used to be uh, rotated more. Now when you buy even vegetables, I'm sure many of my vegetarian listeners will know, it does not help because there is no vitamins in the vegetables that you are eating anymore because it's been destroyed. No mention of that. No mention of genetically modified food. No mention of Monsanto. Obesity among baby boomers is more than double the rate of their parents at the same age, and boomers with three or more chronic conditions was 700% greater than the previous generation. Yep, what did I just say? My father has liver disease, cancer, sugar, and heart disease. Now, in a, pri in a prior generation, he would have probably had sugar and heart disease based on how much he ate and all that good stuff. Cancer, again. The, this, the third element, that there is diseases coming in threes. Don't you people know that there is a myth that says that we are living longer today? We are not living longer today. The only reason that it appears to be so is we have become uh, a long way, leaps and bounds, in neonatology and taking care of infants. If you factor out infant death, which was a huge problem in past generations, you will see that we, on average, are living less and less and less. And if you don't believe this, go through an old cemetery sometime and look at all of the people that died when they were like from one to four, and look at all the people that died when they were in their 90s. This is something new here. We're dying in our 60s and 70s, and that is something that was not common many generations ago, and many people do not know that. Professor Graham Hugo from the University of Adelaide said the findings were alarming and evidence that the new public policies were needed. We have to do something now in terms of reducing obesity as a risk factor if we are going to manage health costs in the future. But I think more importantly, if baby boomers are going to be able to lead active and productive lives, then maybe they shouldn't eat anything from Stopers, Kellogg's, Nestle's. But I mean, we're all eating these things because nobody can afford to eat healthy. Uh, we have a place called the Raisin Rack here in Canton, Ohio. It should be called the Useless Rack because it's so expensive that nobody could ever eat there, so shame on them, they're also part of the problem. Yes, I said it. 76 million American children were born between 45 and 64, representing a population that is a significant on account of its size, even alone. Well, guess what? For you Usher fans that don't know anything, hey, dumb Lady Gaga fans, they want you dead. It's called eugenics. 
and if they could take out the largest population boom, the baby boomers, the biggest generation, in a large chunk by making them live less and putting poisons in their food, then they're going to do so. And Gen Xers, we're next. Gen Y, they're coming for you. And if you don't believe it, then just open your eyes and quit being stupid. Shut off Kesha and learn something. Um, Susan Pozel for InfoWars, a BPA disrupts metabolic rates and causes obesity according to new study. A new study conducted by the New York University of Medicine reports that packaged food is directly correlated to the obesity levels rising in American children because of exposure to bisphenol A, BPA. Now, for those of you that don't know, bisphenol A is a toxin. It is a known poison and it is a known carcinogen. It causes cancer. It, um, it has uh, estrogen mimickers, which means it can turn a straight child male into a homosexual child. Am I saying that no one is born gay? No. Am I saying that a lot of people are turned gay? Yes, I am. And this is one way that it happens. A new study conducted by the New York University, okay, yeah, again, in the first sentence she's already said more than the entire CBS article that I just quoted did. According to the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey from 03, 92.6% of children six years and older had obviously measurable levels detected in tested urine. The study also concludes that BPA disrupts other multiple metatabic mechanisms, and I'm going to go on on this one. BPA has been identified as causation for recent early pubescent development in our children. Um, that means that children are hitting puberty quicker. And this creates a big problem. Um, someone very close to me, she hit puberty when she was seven in the uh, 50s. And it was like absolutely unheard of. Nobody she knew, nobody else in her school, nobody else that she's ever talked to in her generation has hit it that early. <clears throat> she's uh, 64 now. So this was uncommon. I say this because between the ages of five and seven is the new average pubescent age wherein this physiological change used to occur years later, just one generation ago. So bisphenol A, that what's in our plastics, is poisoning us. And in one generation, we can see the change. We can see the problem. And for someone like me, who has all but given up pop, this bisphenol A problem is an issue because I live off of practically vitamin water or life water. And I say that, they don't advertise with me. As much as I drink, they probably should. But, um, you know, it, it wasn't hard for me to do, by the way, for those of you that wish to do so. I work as a DJ in a nightclub, and if I want something to drink, I mean, not, not the alcohol, um, that'd be nice. But if I want something to drink, I can get it, because I have to talk every three minutes to so like coffee, and I can use the gun for the cranberry juice, pop, whatever. My point is, if I want pop, then I get myself a glass, and I pour myself some pop. But if I'm not craving pop, I avoid it like the plague. I drink none of it. And that is how you give up uh, pop addiction, by the way. And nobody drank more than I used to. Um, <clears throat> having said that, the bisphenol A that is in the plastic in the pop is in the plastic that is in vitamin water and life water. And what you're drinking and what your children are drinking and what the plastics that your kids have in their toys. <gasps> Do your kids have any plastic toys? Then pay attention! BPA is a highly toxic estrogen. For you hip-hop fans, that means poisonous. Accelerator that is used in all plastic products commercially produced. The chemical mimics natural estrogen when leached into the body. It offsets, offsets natural estrogen level, causing the body to hasten pubescent generation. Um, also linked to obesity. Mesodium glutamate, MSG. Uh, that's what's in a lot of uh, cheap oriental foods. Um, Platelets used in plastics, uh, PFOA used in Teflon, and also harmful to the immune system, liver, and thyroid. Uh, don't use Teflon. It, it just wash the dish. Don't be so damn lazy because Teflon will poison you. It'll also give you Alzheimer's. This is confirmed fact. Look it up. Corn fed cows has higher levels of saturated fat in their beef. Arsenic fed to pigs and chickens affects the thyroid gland. Pharmaceuticals and medications in the public water supplies negatively affect the natural chemical makeup of our bodies. Now, you know they're trying to make pills so that we'll take pills so we won't be fat. That's because of the big money that is in Monsanto and in uh, bisphenol A production and in the fluoridation poison that we're putting in our water 
they don't want us to stop using their things or to get them out of our food, which is what a responsible thinking nation would do. Instead, they want us to buy pills so that we can eat their food and be thin. It is that bad, people. I do have some good news. And did I say good? And how about great news? This is from thewatchdog.org. Polls show Gary Johnson is at 10.6 in Ohio. Ding, 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 ding. Yes! That is wonderful because these nameless pieces of human filth that run the debates aren't letting Johnson in. Although, much to my amazement, he is going to be in the Fox debates. So, hats off to Fox on this one. Um, boycott the debates and listen to the Fox debates. I'm serious. Fox is not flawless, but when they do something, they need to be thanked for it. And they're way ahead of CBS, CNN, ABC, all of them. So, good job, Fox. Does Libertarian Party presidential candidate Gary Johnson really have more than 10% support in the critical battleground state of Ohio? Or is the number just a mirage? While most political observers and pollsters obsess about the numbers between Barack and Romney, a poll last week by an organization called Gravis Marketing showed the former two-term governor of New Mexico picking up 10.6% of 594 likely voters who answered a telephone survey between the 21st and 22nd. Now listen, people, I've said this before. Let's, even if you're going to vote for O'Dumney or uh, Romney, it doesn't matter. Just say that you are voting for Gary Johnson or other, because that will propel him to possibly getting in debates. It's getting a little late, but let's shake the system up. Now, I am probably voting for Johnson, unless something major changes. I am. And I'm asking you, if you care about the country, to do the same. <laughs> um, I can't answer exactly why Johnson scored so highly in the poll of Doug Kaplan, the president of Gravis Marketing, told Capitol Report New Mexico on Monday. 10% is tremendous. Well, it says why, because normally, much like Ron Paul, Johnson is cheated by omission. While most all other polling organizations have asked potential voters to choose among O'Dumney and Romney, I know what their names are, and other, Gravis included Johnson in his survey of Ohio, which holds 18 electoral college votes. Here is the results when Johnson's name was included. If the presidential election was held today and the candidates were Democrat Barack O'Dumney and Republican Mitt Dumney, and Libertarian Gary Johnson, and whom would you vote for? Johnson 10.6, Obama 44.5, Unsure 7.1, and Dumney 37.8. So when you include his name, he goes through the roof. Uh, numbers high as can be. So what do you think's gonna happen, pray tell? What do you think's gonna happen when we finally create so much noise that they can't shut us down? 2016, if the Mayans are wrong, is going to be pretty damn interesting. Don't forget as well, if we can uh, make him really, really lock in, up. Oh, I'm almost out of time. If we can make him really, really lock in and get some numbers going, then he's going to get a massive amount of money when it comes time for federal matching funds next time. Uh, past libertarians weren't going to take it, but Johnson is going to take it. And hey, it's a corrupt system, but if it's the way the system is set up, he deserves every penny. You are listening to The Correct Views. Please donate if you can. It all goes towards better gear, friends. Good night. God bless.